that uh, Hagrid's to be back or to be heading back to the G. Yeah, it's good. No, it's yeah, we love we love playing there. Um, yeah, and we're coming up against a team that's in good form. So yeah, well, it's good. It's, yeah, it's good to be back there. Even possibly without Clayton Oliver, they present as one of the most dangerous teams in the league. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, they get the game going. They're um, really strong defensively, really good in contest, and they score heavily off the back of those two things. So. Yeah, we're going to have to be at our best. Uh, and I don't think, you know, Clayton's a really good player. Uh, I understand that, but they're not really individually driven. I think they're, they're system team based. So, yeah, prepare for, them, prepare, prepare for them at their best. Is there anything tangible that you can use this week based on the big win that you had there last year against Melbourne? Uh, yeah, there's, there's things we can look back at. But, yeah, and they probably don't, haven't changed too much in terms of the system they're trying to play. But, yeah, I tend to look back at those sorts of things pretty quickly and you know, mainly focus forward and focused on you know, getting the balance right between focusing on them and how we need to stop them, but what our strengths are and trying to keep our momentum going. So we'll just keep working through that. How would you describe, I guess, broadly the, the form and, and confidence that the guys have got at the moment? Yeah, we're not getting too carried away, but... Um, I just feel like we're back to playing instinctive footy and um, it's built off the things we can, can control, not the things we can't control. And one of those things is the ability to get after the, the ball and get after the man with the ball. It's a pretty simple thing, but it's where my, most teams start their game and we've got that going. So uh, you know, a lot of players, we've taken a lot of confidence out of the last couple of weeks and you know, we need to keep riding that momentum. You declared Fifey's on unlimited time. So, what's what's the next step in working out how much he plays mid and how much he plays forward, or is he still played forward a fair bit? No, we'll just keep working through that. Yeah, he's um, muted. We don't feel like we need to sub him out this week. So, just keep working through evolving his role and where he can have impact for us. Against Melbourne, would that be in the midfield? You, you think no, we'll work it out later. Work it out later. He played a similar role last week. I would have thought. Luke Jackson obviously preparing to play his former side. How do you think he might respond if he does get a bit of treatment or reception? Oh, it'd be water off a duck's back, I think, with Luke. He takes, he's taken every challenge in its stride. He's taking criticism in his stride. Doesn't seem to phase him too much. Um, and expect him to, yeah, I mean, there's always a little bit of anxiety around playing your old team and teammates, but uh, he'll prepare himself the same way as he has been preparing and go out there and compete his backside off and cop whatever he cops. He's um, he's a pretty resilient, um, composed character. How do you feel like you've been able to sort of get the best out of him up forward this season? Oh, being able to try and yeah, teach continue to educate him on his forward craft and what we want what what we want in his role. And he's all along he's been really committed to working on his craft in terms of his marking and you know, all the things it takes to be a good AFL player. So I think early in the year, I was a little bit blown out of proportion his form in terms of he just wasn't taking his opportunities. Now he's able to take his opportunities and, and convert his hard work and those opportunities and score. And if we're not, if he's not scoring himself, he's been able to set up scores. So uh, yeah, his, his work ethic's been fantastic and that's allowed him to you know, make the most of some of those opportunities. What is it about his personality that means that you know, criticism was water off a duck's back and, and playing against his former team won't bother him? Uh, he's, yeah, it's interesting. Way to, I don't, yeah, don't really probably know how to describe it 100%, but he just, he's carefree and he, he focuses on the future, not, not the past, and just feel like he's got a real um, level head when it comes to... Um, uh, understanding expectations, but also self-reflecting on his on his own game. I mean, he he uh, and and that allows him just to control what he needs to control. Um, you know, he's always got a good un, good understanding of a what he how his performance went, but what he needs to do to improve that performance, um, which allows him to be really level and process orientated and focus on the things he can control. If he does cop. A bit from his former teammates and and the crowd. Is he the type of player that would thrive 
of that energy? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, like he's, he probably doesn't allow those sorts of things to worry him. Like I said, he's, he's process orientated. So, um, yeah, I'd imagine, yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll acknowledge it, but just move on to what he needs to do next. And those are the type of players that are able to perform under those circumstances. Can you take us through um, selection last week? I don't know, who, who came up with Luke Ryan onto Cameron and was it initially, no, nah, that can't work. And then it was like, oh, you know what, that might work. And then he showed you the tapes and then... No, it was, yeah, probably a lot's getting made of it. I you know, think back a couple of years ago, Luke Luke was doing that role for us, um, and he, he had to through necessity because we were had a lot of um, key defenders injured. So he, he was able to you know, one Geelong game he played on Hawkins. So he was taking those matchups. Um, then yeah, Boydie threw it up in match committee and asked him the reasons why, and off we went. We moved his magnet over to Cameron. So. Uh, we, we like Coxie in a position where he can support the others a little bit more. So uh, that's why he, he took Henry and, um, yeah, it worked out well. The last three rounds, three men have been first in the comp for yeah, points from clearances, contested possession differential and you know, clearance differential. Have you guys made any big changes over the last three rounds or is it just a case of things just simply clicking? <clears throat> oh, it's a bit of it clicking. I mean... Yeah, clearance work early in the season wasn't up to scratch, so they've worked really hard to get that right. Um, and we've probably been kicking the ball a little bit more. So as you know, everyone thought we were going too too slow in the first part of the year, but we're handballing more than any other team in the comp, and that gets you into trouble, and it can become unpredictable. So we've kicked the ball a little bit more, especially in our back half, which has made it more predictable. Um, yeah, so you can write that up how you want. That's, that's a fact. And um, that's helped us um, get our get our contest right because we're a little bit more predictable with the ball in hand. Is it, is it be fair to say, Joe, that Fifey you don't need him in the forward line anymore, and maybe he could become a midfielder again? Could that be part of the transition? Yeah, all along, sort of said wherever we wherever we um, think he can help the team, and probably right now with plan, us playing one less mid, it's probably in the midfield a little bit more. Uh, and you're right, like, Fife probably leans towards being a bit more of a taller forward for us with his skill set at the moment. Not saying he can't develop into other roles, but you know, Josh Tracy and Jai you know, stepping up and being really consistent, and it probably allows us the freedom to yeah, play him in the midfield a little bit more. How good could Jai be? He showed a lot on the weekend in mean, its early days. But... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think he can be really good. Yeah, he's got a lot of work to do. Um, still in his game, but and you know a lot of work to do in the gym and with his running to build his tank. But yeah, you know, obviously drafted him as a high draft pick on the back of what he did in his last couple of years at East Perth, where he you know, kicked a lot of goals. So um, yeah, he's he's a part of a well functioning forward line at the moment. And is Bailey Banfield a bit underrated too? Probably not within the club, but he did some good things on the weekend and had a bit yep. of an impact on Stewart as well. And yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a bit of a mis, Mr. Fix-It. When we play a little bit smaller in the forward line, he's able to play one of the taller roles and give us a contest. He's able to nullify some uh, opposition interceptors or rebounders, which he did a little bit on the weekend. Um, and he's able to play the forward role. So he's he's really flexible for us and even went to the wing for a little bit on the weekend. So yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's in good form and yeah, playing an important role for us. How big of a test will this weekend be for Sean Darcy up against two of the best in the comp, even though his form is great at the moment? Yeah, it's it's a great challenge for him. Then you know, Gorn and Grundy play slightly different ways, and uh, in transition they they react really quickly and get hard forward. So yeah, Sean and Luke, are, yeah, it's a great challenge for both of them. And um, yeah, one I think they're ready for, and and they'll excel at. But it's going to be one of their biggest challenges of the year. They got after Das late in the year last year, didn't they? That, that was their main target, wasn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. Sean's been in good form. I mean, it, teams seem to get in the way of the rucks and stop them from getting into dangerous spots. And saw that a little bit with Gorn last week against Port. They blocked his run, and yeah, Sean cops a little bit of that um, from most teams. So he he works his way through that pretty well, and doesn't seem to affect his what. He, yeah, doesn't seem to affect his game. It's always calling him swaggy. How's his swagger this way? <laughs> it's always pretty strong.
Yeah, <laughs> it's always pretty strong. Just on coaching, Jana, it's been a big week in AFL coaching. Do you feel supported enough? Can you talk about the pressure of being a coach, or the fact that someone like Harvey would walk away like that? Uh, yeah, this is a good reminder for everyone that, yeah, the, it's a, it is a difficult job. And for, yeah, I knew that when we ste- I stepped into it, and all senior coaches know that it's a difficult job when you step into it, so not asking it to be any easier. What we are asking is um, the AFL to step up and support us more. Um, and that's not just senior coaches, it's all football department staff and return the soft cap to the levels pre-COVID. But it's, you know, all we're asking is, is, is for, us, for it to go back to the future yeah. <laughs> and back three years. We're not asking, for, um, not asking for it to be elevated to what it was in the past. We just want it to go back to what it was in the past. And that's the starting point. Um, and, you know, a lot of coaches and senior coaches, um, really we've only got six months contracts and that's, and that's lucky. Some of our assistant coaches have one month or three month contracts. I think contracts are contracts and should be honoured. Um, and, and that clause should be taken out, but that, that's up to the AFL to act. What does it look like? I mean, fans and the media probably don't understand what it actually looks like having that extra support. I mean, what, if, what are you missing? Or? Well, for instance, uh, most of our coaches have had one day off in the last three weeks. So um, because you play Saturday doesn't mean you have Sunday off. And because you get a day in lieu on Tuesday doesn't mean you have Tuesday off. Like, they would do at least six hours of watching tape on their day off, if not more. So, um, you know, I feel like at Fremantle we're very fortunate. We, um, uh, you know, our well-being gets talked about and looked after well and um, the club puts in place things at the end of the year to be able to give us extra time off so feel looked after but I think uh, I think there's ways the AFL can um, yeah like I said get us back to you know what, what it looked like pre-COVID and um, I mean that helps your well-being a lot if you don't have you know one or three month clauses in contracts um, and you know we can put some more resources around the people who are doing extra work for less money. And so it's just adjusting that soft cap so you can get an extra few bodies in to, to help out. Yeah, whether it's um, rewarding people that are already here um, up to um, a standard which we're at pre-COVID or it's yeah, putting a few more resources in place so that they're not having one day off in three weeks.